In this screencast, we're going to take a look at Python and using the Python integration in GDB. Now, it's a, it's a big topic worthy of a, its own dedicated screencast series, I think, and indeed we're going to do uh, a, a few episodes um, to, to explore some of what's available in the Python. So GDB has this very tight integration with Python, very useful. You can do all kinds of cool things to make you know, really thorny debug problems become tractable, um, plus lots you can do um, uh, to, to customize GDB and what's available to your particular project. Um, so let's dive straight in um, and let's let's see how you do that. Very simple stuff just to get started. Um, so here's our, our hello world that we've used previously and uh, load that into GDB, all good. So um, uh, let's uh, let, let's just, just start by invoking the Python interpreter in the uh, simplest way you can. So Python, now I can type a, a series of um, the Python script in and that script will get executed at the time that I type end. So I'll do a simple one line canonical hello world and there it goes. Okay. Now it's not shelling out to, to some Python uh, interpreter. It is it is sort of that, that is sort of inside the, the GDB process and we can we can see this. So import OS print I um, PID format os get pid like that um, and now I can shell out from GDB of course so you might know the shell GDB command so I can just just do that and, th and this proves this will prove my point this is part of the GDB process right so here's the GDB process here pid 4286 and uh, that's exactly what my little bit of Python printed out why does this matter well it's all about the integration um, with with GDB also good to know that this is, is sort of long-lived so I can um, Python uh, foo equals 42 um, and now I can do another Python script to print foo and we'll see it's still there right so so it's kind of a stateful if you like um, now let's look at some of the things uh, we can start to do with the with the integration so the first thing you need to do is import the GDB module and that gives you lots of cool stuff perhaps the simplest is the execute command so Python GDB execute. And now I can just type a command that it's good. They'll then feed into GDB to run. So let's do start. Voila. Um, now that's not terribly interesting. I mean, I can just have a script of GDB commands that I source. So what's the what's the execute on its own is not interesting, but it's the it's the way we start to get more kind of integration. So let me go into TUI mode just to help us kind of see what's going on. And um, let's do one more. Um, Python uh, GDB execute. I'm going to put a breakpoint on line seven. Does what we'd expect to do. Look, here's my breakpoint appeared on line seven here. But that's not very interesting. So I'm going to just delete that breakpoint. Um, and uh, uh, we should see, um, there we are, the breakpoint's gone. Now uh, let's do it through Python kind of properly, if you like. So I'm going to make an object, I'll call it BP. Uh, and, and that's going to be on the GDB breakpoint class, and, and I give it a line spec um, as an as a an argument to its uh, its constructor, and then just for good measure, let's see what happens when we print that that object that I've created. Good. So same has happened again. So look here, my breakpoint has appeared here, um, and uh, I've printed out what it looks like from a Python point of view. So it's this GDB dot breakpoint object has been created now. And I could start to manipulate that, so uh, or, and interrogate it as well. So uh, Python, I can print uh, breakpoint dot enabled, and uh, it tells me. Um, oh, if I could remember how to do Python properly, print bp enabled, and uh, it says, yeah, true, that breakpoint is enabled, um, and I can change that. So Python bp dot enabled equals false. Now before, before I press enter, just keep an eye up. Here's the breakpoint there, and when I hit enter bosh it's changed to uh, disabled um, I can there's an awful lot I can do now I'm going to come out of two mode because I'm going to do um, look at the help so um, the Python inbuilt help for the GDB module is uh, is is useful um, and and pretty thorough so and I find this quite so Python um, and I can do help remember I created my breakpoint object which BP so I can do the Python help thing like this and it tells me all about my breakpoint object, right? And uh, so here are the things. So you can, and you can see this is how tight the integration is. We can do pretty much anything 
uh, that we can do with a breakpoint at the GDB command line, we can do from Python. So we spoke about this in, in, in one of the previous uh, episodes of this screencast series, but we've got, you, know, you can attach commands to a breakpoint, you can make conference be conditional, um, you can uh, ignore a certain number of hits, we can uh, make the breakpoint uh, specific to a particular thread, um, or, or indeed uh, process, uh, we can um, do, as I say, all, all, of the, all of the things you'd want to do um, it, all the things you can do with breakpoints from, from the GDB command line you can do from the Python. And the same is true for most other stuff. So if I'm, I'm going to do now Python help on that GDB module, uh, we can see some of the things that we have. So um, uh, uh, we've got uh, all of these kind of objects here. So we've got architecture and block and block. So this, this is all stuff about your the, the program that you're debugging, right? you're inferior, and you can start to explore and explore that program and the blocks and the lines and everything, which is um, uh, uh, very interesting. Breakpoints we've looked at. You've got um, these events, right? So it could be a thread, uh, thread stop events. Maybe it stops because of breakpoint or a signal. Um, and you can, um, you can. We'll see this in a subsequent episode of this series. You can, ho you can hook um, commands, uh, you hook functions to run when these events um, occur. Um, and we can look at the inferior, we can look at functions, and, and you, so you've got quite a lot of information that you can pull out of the inferior that you're debugging, and a lot of ability to sort of drive GDB. You can actually uh, create your own commands, um, which is which is very useful, and you can create pretty printers to help you, um, uh, you know, make make sense of the data structures that you're that you're debugging. So to, and that's all as I say about how you customize. GDB uh, to work better in your particular project or in your company. So that's a very high level overview of how this stuff works. We're going to get into more detail in, in subsequent screencasts. Thank you for listening.